didn't they use that ability to win a lottery? They didn't want to what? Oh yeah, they didn't want to misuse it. That's why they were on TV asking for people to call them. Oh. Yeah, exactly. That's it. You can't use it. There's a there's a future tellers code that you can't break. You can't use you can't use it to to uh, win money. You have to use it to help people. So we cannot tell the future, but we can assign a number on a prediction based on past what events or situations. You're right. So I know. Yeah, that and late. So what does the scale and probability go to? Zero to one. So you might want to write that down, zero to one. And it's in your book. I mean, you can look for it in your book somewhere in there. Huh? Probability scale goes from zero to one. Now we don't use fractions in probability. We do a little bit. But as far as assigning probability, most of your egghead teachers are going to say you have to use decimals. Okay, you have to use decimals. You cannot use percents. And some <laughs> teachers don't care. I don't. <laughs> but I like to say that if you're talking about probability, that's not right. Probability. If you're talking about probability, you want to keep it with the decimals. If you're talking about chance, that's when I tell students to use percentages. And that way students can grab onto that a whole lot easier than, well, you're supposed to use it here, but you're not supposed to use it here. Um, everybody has seen this before. It's called the weather. If you go to your weather on your phone, it will give you a percentage chance that it's going to what? Rain. Rain. If it's 50%, then you know that there's a pro high probability that it might rain because it's 50%. Anything lower than 50% and you go, Psst, it ain't going to rain. And anything greater than 50%, you say, I better take an umbrella. So the chance is used a lot with weather. So I have a question. Yes. This morning it was three percent chance of rain, but I was driving in the rain. No, not three percent. I promise I'll do that. Usually they do increments of ten. Yeah. Three <laughs> percent. Well, right now it's at four, but earlier this morning it was. That's precipitation. Percent of precipitation. Yeah, but yeah, that's and that, that's I don't understand that. Right. I've never seen that before. That must be a, it's actually failed. Oh, precipitation is actually failed. I guess. I've I've never seen it. Mine puts out percent. You know, it puts out percent chance. Sixty percent. So I don't know. I don't know what you got. Mine, mine puts out a little cloud, and it puts out the sun, and that means partly cloudy. Okay, so I don't know. I think you got a special needs weather channel or something. Okay. It'd be killing me, man. All right. Now, most of your, most of your mathematical, most of your math people and your stats people, they get kind of crazy about the decimals, and they'll go. Uh, no, it's not 50% chance, it's a 0.5 probability. And that's the way they are. So you gotta watch out, you gotta watch out. If you go into a probability and statistics class at Clemson, you might have one of those teachers. And you got to be careful because I don't want you to get something wrong on that test because you wrote 50% instead of 0.5. And some teachers will mark it right and some won't. So you gotta make sure with your teachers that you're on the same wavelength that they are. Um, there's two types of probability. 
And this is where I go away from the book a little bit because I use my own uh, terminology. And one is called the Mayberry probability. And one is called the physical probability. Why do I call one the Mayberry probability? Does anybody know what Mayberry represents? Mayberry. You know, Andy Griffith Show? Yeah. What does Mayberry represent? Anybody, anybody have any idea? Paradise. Utopia. You know, somebody gets locked up, they get out, they're fine. They don't, they don't, they don't have any crime rate. Everybody's happy. Nobody's, there's no drama. In other words, it's perfect. All right? Mayberry probability is the perfect probability. It is what is theoretical. It is, it is the probability that it's supposed to be. Not actually. What do you mean, Hubert? Well, let's take the probability, and this is the way that you write probability. You put a P, and then you put tails. What is the probability, if you flip a coin, what is the probability of it hitting tails? 50% or 0.5 probability or 1 out of 2? Because the coin has two sides, and it will fall on what? one of those sides. So the Mayberry probability of tails is 0.5. And the Mayberry probability of heads is 0.5. Together they equal what? 1. That is what we call the theoretical probability or the Mayberry probability. What is the probability of rolling a 6 on a die? One out of six. That's the Mayberry probability. That's the theoretical probability. But the physical probability is what you actually do. So when you take a coin and you flip it five times and you get two of those times you get tails and three of those times you get heads. Well you take your calculator and you say two out of five is equal to what? And you get 3 out of 5 is equal to what? Well, put them both over 10, you get 4 tenths. And you get what? 6 tenths. Wait a minute. I thought you said 0.5, Hubert. Well, that's the difference between the Mayberry probability and the physical probability. All right. Now, what, what increases? What increases the physical probability to get closer to the Mayberry probability? Law of large numbers. Now they used to have a real nice page dedicated to this. And it showed all kinds of, of examples that were computer generated. Like one that I remember in the eighth, what edition y'all got right now? Huh? The 12th, yeah, this was like the 8th edition. It was green. And they had a, showed where a computer generated, they showed a spreadsheet. And the computer generated like 1,000 times flipping a coin, 2,000 times flipping a coin, 3,000, and it showed the probability of it actually occurring. And the, um, the whole gist of it was that at 10,000 flips, you got a 0.489 probability. So what does that mean? Well, the statistics part we just got over with showed you how to find statistics, how to calculate, and all that good stuff. Probability is showing you the prediction point, po part as well as you don't go out and interview five people, you go out and interview 500 because of the law of large numbers. It's trying to bring it together. 
You don't do five trials. You don't do ten trials. You don't do fifteen trials. If you want accurate data, you've got to do large numbers. Now, we're going to we're going to decide in chapter in unit four when we get to the uh, or three or four, I think it's four. Uh, we're going to decide or calculate what kind of sample to get or to research based on the I just forgot the word. Based on the accuracy that you want. If you want a 97% accuracy, then you need to calculate the sample for, you know, how many you need to research. Uh, it comes out three, 400, 600, depending on what kind you want, what kind of results you want. Most people want above a 98%. I don't want to walk into a president's report. I don't want to walk into a director's report, uh, you know, a meeting and say, oh, this is an 85% probability. Because you're being paid to what? You're being paid to research. You're being paid to find a very high accuracy, not a very low accuracy. Okay, you need to walk in there and say, I have a 98% accuracy. I'm 98% sure that this is gonna happen with our company in the next six months, all right? And that's where you use the uh, sample space. You always want to go with big numbers, um, with the law of large numbers. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Let's say that we're talking about the probability of getting a 6 on a die. You say it's 1 6, which is equal to 0.16 repeating, right? So let's take. Our handy dandy virtual, I can remember how to get it. Uh, somewhere in here, tools, more tools. It's somewhere in here. We're we'll going to die somewhere. Just hold on, I'll find it in a minute. Math tools, there we go. Dang old dice. All right, we're going to speed it up a little bit. And we're going to output the flip chart. And let's go ahead and roll. Let's roll ten times. That's six. Uh, six, six the first time. And go. One. Let's write these down. Six. One. Six. Five. This dice don't do like the old one. It used to go all over the place. One. One. Three, six, two, four, and three out of ten is what? Please don't put that in the calculator. Point three. So, what went wrong? Is the dose, is the dose lighted? Is the, is, is the dice loaded? You ever done that and can't do it again? You ever switch the, switch the letters and can't do it again? It's the way your brain works. Is the dose lighted? Is the, is the, I can't say it again. Is the dice loaded? There we go. Is the dice loaded or is something wrong? Or There's always going to be a difference between the physical probability and the Mayberry probability. Always. Unless you just get lucky or unless you have a die that you can control. Um, it's not gonna it's not gonna come out to be 0.16. Now look at those numbers. Let's say you're a gambler. Let's say I'm gonna roll the dice ten more times, or I'm gonna roll it one more time. What would you tell me it's gonna land on? And it won't. Now watch it do it. Yep, figures. Most of the time it doesn't. All right. I don't like this die. I like the one that goes all over the place. Uh, I don't. I don't. I think this one's loaded. Let me. Does it do different when you do that? No, it don't. Go real slow. 
I was throwing it in the air. That's what it's doing. Okay. So we're going to, I don't know where the flip chart is. I hit output flip chart and it didn't do it. it must be doing it somewhere else. All right, so let's roll it 10 more times. So out of, out of the, we're going to keep those 10 and we're going to roll it 10 more times. And that's one. Okay, that's too slow. Six. Three. One. Four. Three. Five. Three. Four. And three. All right, calculate that one out of 20. How many times did we roll a six? How many? I'm sorry, what? One, two, three, four. Four out of 20 is two out of 10, right? Which is, yeah, point two. Well, look at there. We went from a point three to a point two, and we just rolled it ten more times. Will that happen all the time? No. Will it change? Yes. So, if you see it change, then what? You, and you see it going down. Is it safe to put a hundred dollars on the next time we roll? It's going to be point one. No. The only way to be sure is to do it a set number of times. And like I say, on the computer generated model, yeah, they flipped a coin 10,000 times, but they did 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, all the way up to 10,000. And at 10,000, you started to see the 0.49 or 0.48 or wherever. Now, let me ask you this. I want you, and I want you to think, okay? I want you to tell me the Mayberry probability, I want you to think about it, of a face card being picked out of a deck of cards. You'd be surprised. I asked this question one time when I first started teaching probability, and I was astounded at how many people don't know about cards. I was astounded. I had people say, how many cards are in a deck of cards? I had people ask me, how many face cards are there? So, I think y'all need to invest in buying a deck of cards before you get out in the real world. Okay? It's your parents' fault or your guardian's fault. They didn't show you. There's 54. There's there's 54 cards in a deck of cards, plus the instructions. All right. Now, unless you play in big mo, little mo. All right. Unless you play in spades with the big joker and the little joker, usually the jokers are thrown out. All right. So you have 52, 52 regular playing cards. How many weeks are there in a year? So you remember. Now, each deck of cards is broken up into how many suits? Four. Four. How many how many quarters are there in a year? Four. Y'all haven't even seen that. I, that doesn't surprise me. It's parents' fault. Guardian's fault. They should have showed you. Google sometimes the deck of cards. Not that. Do the deck of cards soldier. 
I can't oh. even spell soldier. There it is. It's a it's a story that was written way back in World War Two or whatever, and it tells you how to remember a deck of cards. Well, you can read it. I don't want anybody thinking I'm trying to convert them or anything because it has the Bible in it. But you know, it's how you can remember a deck of cards, and. I always show that to students when they don't know the deck of cards. I show them that because it's the easy way to remember. Anyway, there's four suits and a what? And a deck of cards. What are the suits? What? There's hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. All right, now each suit has a number of cards in it. How many? Well, 4 divided into 52 is what? 13. How many face cards are there? What are they? King, Queen, Jack. So 4 times 3 is what? 12. So what is the probability of picking a face card out of a deck of cards? How many? 12 out of 52. And y'all can do that in the decimal, okay? What is the probability of picking, of rolling a seven on a die? Good job. You said that. Okay. I put that on test one time. Four people missed it out of 30. A die is a single die. It only has how many sides? Six. So there is a little bit of thinking that you have to go through when you're doing probability. You have to think of what? You have to think the number of times something actually happens over the number of times it could happen. Or the number of the number of observances out of the number of possible observances. If I want to figure out how many people in Anderson campus drive a white vehicle, then I need to lock the front gate and the back gate, and I need to go out in the parking lot in the student parking lot, and I have to designate whether they're students or faculty by the stickers, and I would count and students how many white cars there were. And then I would take that and I would put how many white cars over how many what? Just cars, period. And that would be my probability. Now would that be a physical probability or a Mayberry probability? It'd be a physical probability because I actually went out there and what? Counted. Now, if you wanted the physical probability of white cars, you would have to go to the dealers you would have to go to the and see how many for that year, for this year, and see how many white cars they produced. What? Going out there and counting is this one. If you wanted to make a probability for that year, you would have to go and say, okay, Ford, how many white cars did you put out this year? Out of how many you made? And then you'd have to go to all the all the makers and say, how many did you put out? How many did you put out? How many did you put out? And then take that probability, and that would be your Mayberry probability. And then you would compare that, the physical probability here, to that probability of the car makers. But there's something wrong there. All the probability of the car makers is this year. Not everybody can afford buying a new car. So there's somewhat older cars out there. So you're going to have a mix match here. You're going to be comparing apples to oranges because you got new cars from the dealers, and then you got what we got out there. So, you know, there are some things that, but the main thing you need to see here is that probability is the number of times something happens over the number of times it could happen. Okay? So there's two things to think about when you're doing probability. One, you have to think about the conditions. 
You could not do this problem right here, the face card, if you had no idea about what? Cards. So you've got to know a little bit about the subject before you do the probability of it. And you've got to read. That's why the reading on these problems are so, is so crucial. Just one word, or, or and, and you will be told what to do in these problems. So, not these problems, but 4.3, 4.4, whatever those sections are, you're going to be asked to find the probability. Let me give you an example. What is the probability? I want you to do this in your notes. I want you to find the probability of an even card being picked and ace is equal to one. Okay? The probability of an even card being selected and ace being one. And some of you that don't know, what are face cards equal to? Hmm? Face cards? Hmm. Face cards are not equal to two. Like a blackjack. What is 21 in blackjack? An ace if it's 11. We're using an ace as one here. Or 11, it doesn't matter. Or we can, we'll use it as one. And a face card is what? 10. That's how you get 21. Okay? So, what is an even card? Well, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and what? Jack, King, Queen. So how many is that? So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, Jack, king, queen. That's eight, but you got four suits. Eight times four. is? So what's the probability? Again, you have to familiarize yourself with the cards. Question. Now that pretty much is 4.2. Let's look at some of your problems that you're going to have. And then we'll move on to something a little bit more challenging. 4.2. Yeah, just get up and leave. I don't blame you. Okay. He said he didn't like y'all. What is he talking about? <laughs> what? Is something wrong? If somebody needs to leave, I, I don't mind it. I mean, he's here, so I, I just can't remember his last name. Huh? Copeland. Copeland. You leaving too? What are you leaving for? No. You, you get, what's your reason? I mean, if you know the material and don't want to leave, that's fine. I mean... All right, I'm I'm confused. I'm I thought he had somewhere to go. He oh, said he, he really did. He did. <laughs> Dang, y'all y'all know how to make me feel bad. You just don't want to stay in my class. Okay, that's fine. I don't want to grade your test. I'll just give you an F. You are certain to get. I was kidding. You are certain to get two kings when selecting fifty cards from a shuffled deck. Express the indicated degree of likelihood as a probability. Well, what would that be? 2 over 50. It's real simple. 
Okay, I'm just trying to tell you. Here's one. In a test of gender selection techniques, results consisted of 258 baby girls and 238 baby boys. Based on this result, what is the probability of a girl born to a couple using this technique? Out of those two together. The number of times something happens over the number of times it could happen. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Gender selection technique. I think we need to go on, okay? All right. In a survey, 176 respondents say that they never use credit card. 1,234 say that they use it sometimes. And 2,825 say that they use it frequently. What is the probability that a randomly selected person uses a credit card frequently. 28.25 over all of it. So that'd be 28.25, 3,000, just over 3,000 something. So it'd be 28.25 over 3,000 something. Okay? So, you know, 4.2 is not very difficult. Uh, amongst, among respondents, Ask which is their favorite seat on a plane. 487 chose the window seat. 12 chose the middle seat. And 313 chose the aisle seat. I would choose the aisle seat. I could not stand to sit in the middle of somebody or up against the wall. I'd be like this. I'd be wanting first class or something. I couldn't handle that. So... What is the probability that a passenger re prefers the middle seat? 12 out of 800 and something. Whatever it comes out to be. You need to add those up. Uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these because I know a lot of you have had probability, so I don't want to, you know, don't want to insult your intelligence. But... Now, some of these can be a little bit confusing, and I'll hit on a couple of these. Um, we just did that one. Let's do this one. In a survey of consumers aged 12 and over, respondents were asked how many cell phones were in use by the household. No two respondents were from the same household. Among the respondents, 207 answered none. 288 said one. Uh, 369 said 2, and 146 said 3. And 109 responded with 4 or more. A survey respondent is selected at random. Find the probability that his or household has 4 or more cell phones in use. Well, 4 or more is 109. So that's the probability of 4 or more is equal to 109 over, and somebody add all those up for me. I know, I just need to, I need to have it so I can put it down here so everybody can put it in their notes so they'll have an example to go by. So somebody add all those up. 288, or 217, 288, 369, 146, and 109. I'm sorry, what? And somebody divide that for me. What do you get? Just give me a de well, two decimal places. Uh, point, one. point one even? Well, it's point oh nine six. Point oh nine six. Okay, that's good. Point oh nine six. Point oh nine six. And that would be point one. Okay. And that's the probability. So you got a ten percent probability that a household will have, or a 0.10 probability, that a household will have four or more cell phones based on this, based on this study. Okay? So that's what you're going to run into. Now sometimes they will give you the sample space, which is like this one. like that right there. They'll give you the sample space. You don't think of it, 
They just give it to you. And it says, to the right are outcomes that are possible with a couple that has three children. Refer to the list, find the probability. Among three children, there are exactly zero boys. I mean, zero, yeah, three boys. That would be three girls. So how many, how many instances are there three girls? One. So that would be one out of what? So that probability would be one out of eight. Probability of zero boys equals one out of eight. And there it is right there. What? Yep. But to somebody that's never seen probability before, it's not simple. So I got that's why I got to go over this. Among three children, there are exactly what? Three boys. Again, three boys would be the opposite of zero boys. So that would be one out of eight. And that's that one right there. And then among three children, there are exactly two boys. And you would count. How many? There's two boys. Well, here's one. And here's another one. There should be one more. There's one. Right there. And that would be three out of eight. Probability of two boys would be three out of eight. And that's how you find probability with a sample space. So you have data, which is cards and, and what we were doing a while ago. And then you have a sample space given to you. And that's the last five, four or five questions. Um, you know, given boy, boy, girl. And you might want to write this down. You might want to write this guy down right here because it's going to be asked of you on the test. And it's hard to bring it up out of memory. Um, I would just highly suggest that you might want to write that down. And you don't have to write boy, boy, boy. You can just write BBB, BBG, BGB. And it's a whole lot better to have it in your notes where you can get to it than to try to think it up. Because when you try to think it up, you'll be going crazy trying to think up all the different scenarios. Then you say, oh, did I say that? And then you go back and look. So it's easier just to have it written. Okay? Y'all finish writing that down. Okay. Now let's do one more and then we'll move on to some more challenging stuff. All right, I want to show you a test question. There's a test question right there. Well, the, the one with boy, boy, girl, that's a test question. And this is a test question. Go ahead and write it down so you'll have it in your notes because you're going to need it. A roulette wheel has 36 slots. One, do you all know what a roulette wheel is? Yes. Okay. Uh, one slot is zero, the other is double zero, and the others are numbered one through 34. So you have one through 34, then you have zero and double zero. You are placing a bet that the outcome is an odd number. And then they give you a note that says in roulette, zero and double zero is neither odd nor even. So that factors into it. And then they're also going to ask you the odds. The odds against and the odds for. 
Hmm? Yeah, I think so. And then you have to do the non-odd too because you're going to need that for the pro for the odds, for the odds against and the odds for. Hmm. Nope, because zero and double zero are neither odd or even. And that's where people get confused. Yep. Probability, it's not asking for an even, it's asking for an odd. And then I have to ask, you see, and that's, what I, that's where I get into when, when something is given. This is given, all right. So this is this is this is you're placing a bet that the outcome is an odd number. The outcome of an odd number is called success, all right. Then what's failure? Not odd. Not odd. Is there a difference between guilty, not guilty, and innocent? Is O.J. Simpson innocent? Yes. You didn't do it. <laughs> Scott Peterson, was he innocent? He's the guy that killed his wife and his baby. And then the Peterson guy that killed like three wives. And he, they still can't find the third one. Was he innocent? No. Let me ask you a question. If you, was, if you were to be at work, and Mr. Frazier borrows your car, went out and robbed the store, brought the car back, and nobody found out about it until the next day. And then they come to you and say, your car was at the bank, Mr. Massey. And we're going to take you in because you robbed that bank. Is Mr. Massey innocent? Yes, he's innocent. And it will come out that he's innocent because he was at work and they have cameras at work and they will see that he did not do the crime. And they see that there's a gold type of hair. Yeah, type of hair is, yeah. <laughs> type of hair is correct. And then they find Mr. Frazier and then they book him and he goes to jail. All right? Now, let me ask you another question. If you're innocent, do you go to court? Yeah. Yeah. Not really. Now, who goes to court? Well, if you don't have an alibi, if you can't substantiate your innocence, then you go to court. And then they find you what? Guilty or not guilty? Do they say that you're innocent? Is O.J. innocent? No. I don't think he is. He was found not guilty. There's a difference. Innocent is when you have a what? An alibi. You, they, you don't go to court if you're innocent. Now, it's always considered guilty, not guilty, or proven innocent. Well, personally, I don't think if you're innocent, you go to court. If you have an alibi, if you have somebody, if you can't substantiate where you were, then there's a problem. Now, why do I get into innocent and all that? There is success, and then there is what? Failure. The probability of success in this problem is even. I meant an odd, sorry. All right, that's your success. And you need to go out here, and you need to call this success because the odds against and the odds in favor use the probability of success over the probability of failure. Now, the probability of even is the same thing, yes. But it, that's not what we're finding. We're finding the probability of failure. Now, the probability of not odd would be 19, but it is also the what? Failure. So odd is going to be 17 out of 36. And odd, not odd, is going to be 19 out of 36. 
And if you get confused, ask yourself this question. If you put $100 on an even number, could you win if you hit one of these? No. I'm sorry. Odd. If you throw your $100 on an odd number in Las Vegas, and you hit one of these, will you win? No. And that's how you answer your own question. Okay? Odd. Odd is one, three, five, seven, blah, blah, blah. These two are not odd, nor even. But I'm not asking for even. I'm asking for odd. And that's why you have to make that distinction. Yes? You do, but we're not looking for even. Because you're not asked the question's not asking for even. Nothing on there is saying even. I got that I'm just wondering why like I got seventeen for the odd part. That's right, I know that's a question, but even for even I'm getting seventeen but not nineteen. You do. You do get seventeen for even, but it's not asking for even. It's asking for the odd. That's seventeen. And then the rest of the slots, that, that ball is going to fall in one of those slots. I added the zero and the double zero because that is not winning. You got it? Yeah, I thought that was just the, the top part of the bottom and the bottom was just even. No. Nah. No, but in fact, even is not even, I don't even have it on the board. Yeah, I got that. Okay? Now, that's your probability for winning right here 17 over 36. Now, what about odds in favor and odds against? Well, let's look at that. Odds in favor. Is the probability of success over the probability of what? Failure. Failure. And the odds against is the probability of failure over the probability of success. Okay? Leave it in fraction form. Because if you leave it in fraction form, the denominators are going to cancel out. And it's easier to do the math. If you use decimals, then you're going to have to use a calculator to figure. So leave your answers in decimal form. I mean, fraction form. Do not use decimals. So our probability of success was seven. Uh, what? Seventeen over thirty-six over nineteen over thirty-six. And what do you do when you divide by fraction? You multiply by what? Reciprocal and you get 17 to 19 is your odds in favor. Our odds again. Say again. All right. I think he's on drugs today or something. Okay. All right, let me call the roll right quick. What did he say? I think he's drunk. Okay. Everybody's here to let last time. No, I'm not doing that. Man, they got lucky they weren't here last time. Like I say, I don't understand.